this is Alan again. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about crossbows. The type crossbow that I have here is, is made by 10 point. It has a 165 pound draw pull on it. It's uh, set up with a 10 point red dot scope. I have my increment set up from uh, zero to 20, from uh, 25 to 30. And then my, my third dot is set up from 35 to 40 yards. And uh, I've killed a few deer with this and I've really enjoyed it. Today I'd like to go over how to shoot it, uh, a few safety tips on how to handle a crossbow. And also I'd like to go over with uh, the bolts, the size grain bolt that we use. Uh, this is a 400 grain bolt. Uh, on a crossbow, they're called bolt instead of arrows. But you can call them either one. If you decide to get one of these, go to your local bow shop, whoever sells crossbows, and they'll be able to match you up uh, with the type bolts and the broadheads that you use. The type broadhead that I use is put out by Spitfire. This, uh, this type broadhead is three blade. It opens up on the point of impact. I've been very successful as far as killing deer with it. This is what it looks like when it's closed up. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's opened up. The point of impact, the blades fly open. When they fly open, this is your cutting radius. And that's roughly an uh, inch and three quarter cutting radius that it will cut through your deer. Uh, once you punch a hole in a deer, uh, it's designed for the deer to bleed out. And then when the deer bleeds and gets uh, sleepy, he'll just go to sleep and then he'll expire. And I hope that you have a successful hunt once you be able to uh, master and be able to shoot a crossbow successfully. The one thing that we're gonna do, I'm on to uh, talk to you about shooting a crossbow, how to cock it. Uh, we're gonna shoot at a target and show you the display of that. And then we're gonna go over other features of things that I use when I deer hunt. And I hope this uh, video will be successful for you. And if you do decide to get into crossbow hunting, uh, maybe you'll be successful in harvesting or killing your deer. Okay, friends and neighbors, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you the proper way to uh, cock your crossbow and how to load your, your bolt onto your crossbow. And, I, and the safety on this particular one is located back here in the back. Once you engage it and you cock the string, the safety stem will come out. Once it comes out, it's ready to fire. Once you get ready to fire, you depress the stem and push it back in. And when you point at your target or your deer that you're trying to harvest or kill, when you pull the trigger, then it'll shoot for you. All right? So let me demonstrate how we're going to cock this. This particular one has the strings embedded into the stock. You've got a hanger here to put your foot in. You take these little hooks, you go down to your string, hook it onto your string, pull it straight up. Now it is cocked. Okay, once it's cocked, don't point this at anybody or anyone. This is not a toy. This is a killing machine. You take your bolt, you have three veins on it, you take one vein, it doesn't matter which one, run it down through the this V on this beam on this crossbow, slide it under the holder that holds your bolt onto there. Okay, now it's ready to fire. Uh, right down here, I have set up targets at 20 yards. All right, what we're gonna do, we're gonna fire this bolt at that target. This particular sight is a red dot scope. I like running mine on the highest level there is. You've got green color dots and you've got red color dots. I like marking mine on number five. Makes your light brighter and you'll be able to see early of the morning or late of the evening when the sun starts going down. Once you find the deer that you want to shoot at within range, then you're able to put the proper dot on there and then pull the trigger. All right, this is what we're going to do. When you shoot this crossbow, take your hand and put it here. And after I fire this, I will demonstrate and tell you why. Put your hand here, your hand here. Set, once you look at your target, push the safety off, 
bring your elbow into your waist if you're standing up or sitting down. I put my first dot onto the target and I shoot. Okay. All right. The reason why I put my hand on the 10 point crossbow, you do not want your thumb up here. If you grab it like a gun barrel and you pull this string, this string right here is gonna cut your thumb off. This is very dangerous. Be conscientious of what you're doing. Do not shoot one of these if you're taking drugs, uh, prescription drugs or alcohol. You do not wanna be impaired once you shoot one of these. This is a deadly weapon. Please be careful. There again, don't hold it like this. You grab it, and that's what this knob's for, is to hold it down here, and your hand is free of this string. That way you won't decapitate your thumb. And I'm being very serious, friends and neighbors. Be very careful. Okay, well this particular crossbow, I've got replacement batteries. It takes a 1032 battery that goes on top of the scope. I carry extra 1032 batteries and I tape it to my stock. You're gonna find out when you're in the woods, you may decide or forget to leave your scope on and you're gonna run your battery down. Uh, trust me, been there, done that. So that's the reason why you want extra batteries attached somewhere to your bow or in your pocket. So if your battery life expires and goes down, you'll be able to pop the cap, take the old battery out, put the new battery in, and then you're ready for a successful hunt. Okay, another thing I'd like to talk to you about is your quiver. Uh, this particular one happens to be a, a six bolt quiver. Uh, they make them three bolt, uh, four bolt quiver. It's whatever you want to attach to your bow. Your local bow shop will assist you and uh, helping you rig yours out. The way I've got mine, I've got it rigged up with this little clip on the bottom and I can attach mine here and put my arrows on. But when I'm hunting, I like to take my quiver off and set it to the side where I'm easy access to get my bolt. So once I bring it up, I don't have to worry about these bolts flopping in the wind or rattling. You want to be very quiet. Also, there's a sling that I put on this one that you can carry your crossbow. When you're walking through the woods, you can put it like this, or you can wear it like this. Do not tote this thing and it cocked in the shooting position. Very dangerous, don't do that. Okay, I also carry an extra bolt that has a field point on there. Your field point is 100 grain, and you want your broadhead to match the grain field point that you got. This is 100 grain Spitfire, so that you don't want to overweight your bolt. If you use a 100 grain field tip, you don't want a 125 broadhead because when you shoot the thing, it's going to drop. You want the same amount of weight on your field tip as you do your broadhead. Very important, very important that you listen to what I've just explained to you. Okay. Now, some of the apparel that I use when I'm bow hunting, I have my camouflage clothing on. I like using a head net. This one particularly here, you slide it over your head and you hide your face. Believe it or not, you may be the handsome or the prettiest woman on the face of this earth, but your face is the ugliest thing that a deer has ever seen. If it's a wild deer, they're very nervous. They're very scared. If you can, cover your nose. If you can't, bring it under your nose. Okay, this is very important. Also, when you have your camouflage clothing on, you want to wear gloves. You want to be able to cover up your hands. You would be surprised. I, my watch band is silver. When the sunlight hits my watch band, it shines. It's like a mirror, very flashy. A deer may be 100 yards away from him. You may not see him but he will see this reflection on you. So wear gloves, cover up your watch, your rings, if you decide to wear rings and so forth. Very important. Okay, the next thing that I do, most people use these when the rut's on, during gun season. I use it during bow season. This is called a drag rag. Okay, you can attach it to your belt, attach it to your uh, hunting pants, 
or your boot. You can attach this snap to your boot string. What I do, I use Tink 69. It's a, a lure that uh, bucks are attracted to. It's a doe urine. And I spray this, I wet it real good, put the cap back on it, and then I, when I'm walking in the woods, and I'm walking around, this drags behind me. All right, when you get to your destination where you're gonna hunt, don't go straight to the tree or wherever you're gonna hunt. Throw you about a 20 foot or 30 foot radius. Get away from the tree. That way, when the deer is smelling the lure, they will, their senses are focused in on this drag rag. They will go around. If you go straight to your tree, first thing the deer's gonna do, do is he's going to look up and lo and behold there you're going to be now if you're not fully camouflaged and uh, most people that i know when a deer they see the deer they move they jump deer is very particular to movement when you move move slow don't move fast you move slow i've learned this over the years and i've been very successful as far as being able to have deer to walk right up within 10 steps of me um, there's another uh, outfit that you can buy. It's called a Ganelli uh, suit. It's fully camouflaged. Check with your local law enforcement. Uh, see if they allow you to, to use that type of camouflage to, during bow season and be able to hunt. Another thing that I use, this is called a Prismos Original Can. And what this can does, this is the way I call deer. Once I get set up, and things get real quiet, then I'll make the call. Okay, once I do that, I do that every 20 minutes. Most of the time, it'll bring in all different sizes of deer. You'll have bucks, you'll have does, you'll have yearling deer. Sometimes you call in coyotes and bobcats. When you're sitting on the ground and your back is against a stump or a tree, listen 360 degrees around you you may be looking one way and i've had deer to come up behind me out of your line of sight and you won't see them but you can hear them in the leaves as they walk to you as they do that move very slowly to where you'll be able to see what you're doing okay another thing to do is build a blind you can build an artificial blind or you can go to your local sports uh dealer bass pro shop cabela's uh, woods and water places uh, academy they sell little curtain little turkey blinds uh, you can set these up with stakes and you can hide your body from here down that way you can move your legs you can move your arms the animals won't see you moving the only thing they're gonna see you see moving is from here up okay when you make that move and you see your deer approaching then you're able to mount your crossbow to your shoulder and push your safety off, make sure that your red dot is on or whatever sight that you use to line up to be able to shoot the deer when the deer come. Okay, friends and neighbors, another thing I'd like to show you, this is a turkey vest that I've had for quite a few years. I also use it for deer hunting. I buy it one size bigger than normally what I uh, am suited to fit for. I also tie this leather string up here at the top and I bring this around here this way and I just tie just a little pull knot like you tie in your shoes. This thing right here snaps on here. You're able to have all your accessories. You're able to have your uh, deer calls, your Tink 69. That's what I like using. There are other good name brands uh, on the market, but I've always had good luck with Tink 69. The original can, it, it fits right here in this pocket. It's very easy to obtain and retrieve. Put this in here, uh, my limb saw. I'm able to put this in here. Also, also, I carry a bottle of water. Days are gonna get hot and you're gonna dehydrate. Carry your little bottle of water with you so you you'll, uh, won't dehydrate and so forth because you're gonna sweat some. Another thing that I have on this turkey vest is this little cushion pad right here that you can sit on. A lot of days it's gonna rain or early morning it's gonna be moisture on the ground and you don't wanna sit down and get your hiney wet. 
that it's very uncomfortable. Most people call it diaper rash. So the best thing to do is carry your cushion or have you a uh, seat cushion to sit on. And that way, it's very quiet, it's very maneuverable, you can move around, be flexible at what you're doing, and you can be very stealth as far as doing it and being real quiet. The key to it is being quiet. If you have a partner with you, try not to talk. Try to use hand signals. Because most of the videos you see on TV, the people are whispering and they're talking. You do that to these deer in Alabama, they're going to change counties on you. I guarantee you, been there, done that. So try to limit what you say to your hunting partner or whoever's with you. Please be very quiet. Okay, friends and neighbors, another important tool is called a range finder. This is an archery range finder. You can pick these up at various sporting goods, uh, Mark's Outdoors, Simmons, Bass Pro Shop, uh, Cabela's, Woods and Water, things of that nature, Mom and Pop Outdoor Store. If they sell these, it's very important, if you can't afford one, to get you one of these. This will help you judge your distance to know what your limits are on your crossbow, how close in you can shoot or the furthest you can shoot. I've got my crossbow set up out to 40 yards. I won't hardly shoot at a deer or a coyote or a bobcat over 40 yards because this is the way I've got mine set up. Okay, this is very, very important. Uh, not too expensive. Uh, roughly, you can get one most time less than $100 or up to $150, depending on which brand that you buy. This is an archery's choice, and I've uh, it's put out by Nikon, and I've been very successful with it. Another thing that you want to do when you're early season bow hunting, the weather hasn't got real cold yet here in Alabama, it stays warm. You got ticks, you have fleas, you have red bugs. Most people call them chiggers. Wear you uh, insect repellent. Try to find one that's unscented. That way, uh, deer have a very sensitive nose. They will smell you. Very important, wash your clothes. Make sure you take a bath. Don't use no perfumes or real scented soap because deer have a nose that can smell you up to 50 to 100 yards when the wind is blowing from you to them, okay? Another thing that I'd like to show, this is called a grunt call. I use this in series with my doe bleat, and a grunt call sounds like this. Okay, don't blow it no more than that. Once you do that, then you can wait a few seconds. And... Okay, put that down, put this down as quiet as you can. Try not to make no noise. I do that every 20 minutes. And over the years, I've been real successful as calling deer up to me. Another thing, if you're hunting uh, late in the evening at dark, whether you're float hunting, uh, you tie your boat up on the bank and you go into the woods, if you're hunting Army Corps engineer land around Demopolis or Mississippi, I'd recommend that you use a glow stick, you shake it up, you break it, you tie a string hanging on a limb where your boat is, or your vehicle. That way at night, you can see this a long ways and you'll be able to find your way successfully back to your point of destination where you started. A compass is a good thing to have also. A lot of times people get turned around on new property that they hunt and they get lost. They don't know where they're at. Another thing that I recommend keep with you is a first aid kit. You never know what kind of accident you may run into. You may cut yourself with a broadhead. You may cut yourself with a pocket knife. You may cut yourself with a limb saw. This is very important. I use mine when I'm either hunting off the ground, I'm bow hunting, or either I am hunting with a rifle. A lot of times the limb's in the way, and I can use this to saw the limb out or build a little makeshift line to hide me so the animals can't see you. Okay, another very important thing is a safety strap. I use this a lot, like if I have to drag a deer I, I drag it uh, to the point of destination where I put it in my boat or on my truck. Now, here lately, I have obtained what they call a little cart that you tote deer on. And I would like to show that to you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this device right here, I call it a deer caddy. I'm sure it has other names, but I bought this from Bass Pro Shop. Uh, they have them in their catalog. I'm sure Cabela sell them. 
most well-known sporting goods places they sell these you may check with academy also one, uh, they're not pre-assembled you have to put it together yourself it's very simple but what i do is when i kill a deer i'll bring the deer here and i'll try to put the deer in the center either put his head up here or put his head down there so when you pivot this thing it acts as a wheelbarrow your your most of your weight of your deer is right there you can either push it push your deer to load it up or you can turn this way and you can drag your deer now if you have a buddy with you or a hunting partner one on one end one on the other and it's very easy to help get your deer out of the woods and be able to load it in a truck or in a boat if you're uh, like i said if you're hunting somewhere that you use a boat this is very helpful and has helped me over the years i had this in a box for about i'd say eight years before i ever decided to put it together i had to have surgery uh, during my surgery i found out that i was not as strong and as stout as i used to be this has been a very important tool you want little ratchet straps that you can add onto these. You can pick these up at your local hardware store. Uh, sometimes Bass Pro Shop sell these over in the boating department with the boat accessories. And you put your deer on here and uh, you can ratchet and stretch it down and tie them on, secure them so he don't fall off and you will be able to take your deer and be able to take it home or take it to a processor and have them to take care of it for you. Where you have it ground up in hamburger meat cube steak or so forth or uh, deer jerky things of this nature so i hope what i've kind of demonstrated to you a little bit that it will help you in the future and maybe help you become a better hunter and be a successful hunter and i hope you be safe and be conscientious of what you're doing and be kind to your fellow hunter and i hope this uh segment here will help you if you like what you see like and subscribe to me and we'll see you next day goodbye <music>